tell me a little bit about kind of um, what it's like to be able to, you know, really lean in to do well, do good, and to kind of still be on on in a space that uh, many that has a lot of stigma around it. That many people are are ashamed to talk about or critical of. You know, talk a little bit about kind of what it's like to be doing what you're doing. Yeah, let me start with the stigma. Um, it's it's definitely lessening. Um, a good example would be a month or so ago, a great uncle, um, you know, didn't quite understand what I was into. Um, <laughs> majority of my life with the molecules or plant medicines, even cannabis, um, you know, read something in the New York Times about PTSD and vets. And he was like, oh, is that what you're doing? All <laughs> right. All right. Hey, that's really cool. Good for you. From, yeah. you know, even a, a month before that article hit, it would have been like, oh, is it, yeah, is he still in that, doing that drug thing, you know? Right, um, right, right, right. So, like, to get it from that, um, and I don't want to say he's, you know, myopic, closed minded, uh, uber conservative, uh, lives in the 50s, but I just did. Uh, so, for someone like that to say, Hey, good job. Good job. Yeah. Um, and seeing this, this, this whole narrative that, you know, there were these molecules and there were these modalities of healing people with, with great results. And then, you know, like in the early seventies with the controlled substances act, it was like, uh -uh, you know, game over. So it's been, um, you know, in this space, it's, it's been dormant for 50 years. That's why a lot of people are mm -hmm. calling it the Renaissance, the psychedelic Renaissance. Mm -hmm. And you have this time in history where it's this perfect storm of um, not just more research, um, not just shifts in regulatory uh, regimes, uh, not just uh, all the great efforts around cognitive liberty and, and what's called decriminalization, which is, you know, happening at a, a rapid clip, not just across the U.S., but the world. Um, but money. You know, money is really that last component. And this is, there's contention around this. You know, some of these mm -hmm. molecules and the, the healing that people have is so profound and it kind of shakes them at their core and makes them question everything around our societal structure. Um, and more times than not, you know, money is viewed as a predatory, divisive, competitive, you know, capitalistic, um, uh, entity. Um, that being said, the last part of the perfect storm is the beginning of capital markets and the fact that, yeah, there's going to be a people who make a lot of money. But as I, you know, often reflect, I don't know why it's still in my head because I haven't watched it in 20 years, but I think it was Cabaret, Liza Minnelli, and the song Money Makes the World Go Round. Um, but it's like, it, that's, that's why there's, there's so much attention right now. And I think if mm -hmm. there was, there was not that opportunity for capital markets, for profit, for scaling early stage companies around the psychedelic industry, um, there wouldn't be this renaissance. Uh, mm -hmm. yeah, there'd be research. Yeah. There'd be some regulatory shift, but this is, you know, fuel on the fire or, you know, water, uh, the soil, or whatever metaphor. So I think that's a really big reason you're seeing this now. And the stigma shifting um, is that capital markets side of it. <laughs>